Demons on a Girl in a Netflix movie for teenagers. Is this movie any good? Wendell and Wild. Let me tell you what I think and to give you some suggestions on thematic issues coming up next. <laughs> Director Henry Selleck directs and co-writes this movie, Wendell and Wild. He hasn't made a movie in 13 years. Last one was Coraline, but he's made a number of great movies. He is the master of stop-motion animation, along with Ardman Studios in England. He's made Nightmare Before Christmas, which I love. Coraline and James and the Giant Peach. He's teamed up with a comedic duo of Key and Peele who play the demons Wendell and Wild in this movie. Jordan Peele actually co-wrote this script. He, of course, is now a famous horror movie director. And these two demons are weirdly uh, helping this demon lord out with his hair plugs, putting hair cream on his hair plugs in the underworld. Meanwhile, in the above world, we have Kat, who very quickly in the movie, as we see, loses her parents. They die in an accident, and she's dealing with the guilt and trauma of that. And these two little crafty demons realize that Kat is their hell maiden she can get them up in the world of the living why do they want to go there it's kind of a thin reason they want to establish a dream fair in the dilapidated rundown town that cat is from so they try to strike a faustian bargain with cat they say hey we'll resurrect your parents for you whom you're missing if you will bring us up into the overworld the world of the living and let us run amok cat meanwhile has been sent to a private catholic school where she meets a friend a good teacher and other people there who kind of know the world of the demons also a head master. I can't say much more about him, although something happens to him that's pretty important. Now, the movie is about, in part, Kat's trauma over losing her parents, wishing that they could return from the dead and have their old town restored. The town has been decimated, destroyed. It is run down. And this movie is partly about the social devastation of a town because, in part, the parents' brewery was burned down. These parents were entrepreneurs. They ran a brewery. The town has sort of gotten destroyed just as the parents died and the brewery was burned down to the ground. Well, let me tell you what I think is good about this movie. It kind of combines Roald Dahl, Neil Gaiman, and you would expect that maybe from Henry Selleck, who knows how to use those two authors. Stop motion animation for a while is a wonder to look at. First of all, you don't get that her herky-jerky stuff from stop motion here. It's a very seamless and pretty fluid. I really like looking at this movie. You can almost feel like you can touch it. It has a lot of rich textures to it. Rarely do you see a movie where it feels like touch is a sensation you're having as a movie viewer, because movies are just about sight and sound, but I feel like touch is a very strong sensation here in this movie, and the movie shuns the popular trend of going towards very bright, flashy colors in kids and teenage movies, especially in even Netflix movies are like this too. This movie goes for heavy, dark colors, whether they're blacks or grays, or especially purples, even some blues and some greens, and to have texture with those darker colors is really interesting to me. I think Henry Selig, even he's almost 70 years older, he is, shows off some master craftsmanship here. And no matter what your views of this movie, storyline, po politics, or anything else, you watch this movie like I watched Nightmare Before Christmas and inspired as a creator. It's because of its aesthetic wonder. I was looking around the movie a lot and not paying too much attention to the plot. There are a lot of extra characters in this. The movie goes on for a while. There's a lot of developments. Some viewers will get lost in them. I actually think it's good that a movie is kind of trying to be complex because this movie could be very simple, pitting one thing versus the other. I'm glad it's trying to be complex, and yet at times I felt it was too much so. And then we have the subject matter, which is going to divide a lot of people, audience members. I felt this movie is very strange because, and I have to get into territory of spoilers, it just has to happen. So the movie heavily emphasizes demons, devils, the macabre, the resurrection of the dead, zombies, Catholic mystical stuff, typical of horror movies. And you know that Selleck is coming out of, the may have listened to a lot of Oingo Boingo, Tim Burton, Petal Juice stuff. This sort of goofy, comedic macabre that's still macabre nonetheless played Grim Vandango <laughs> as a video game. And yet the subject matter is uber serious. Child with trauma, their parent, her parents die. These demons who are foul tricksters. And yet the movie kind of plays fast and loose with a, this horror stuff about life and death because in the end, the really serious problem in this movie is city planning. Yeah, you heard me right. City planning is the real problem in this movie because a private prison corporation is trying to sort of bulldoze this this town and make it worse and actually try to turn little kids into prisoners for their own profit. They're very terrible people in this movie, kind of looking like Cruella de Vil, one of them does at least. And so the ultimate bad guys aren't the demons or devils, they're private prisons. So I find it very odd that in a movie where kids are dealing with trauma, worried about death, 
the fixation on death, death and resurrection, demons, tricksters, devils, that this is the ultimate problem is urban revitalization, how to revitalize our city. And it's not typical in horror films either to have the Catholics, Catholic nuns, and other faithful religious Catholics working together with demons and devils. That's just weird to me. So I'm a little stunned in the movie that's about the supernatural and problems of evil that the real problem here is social and political. Now, while I'm all for town revitalization, localism, and being worried about outsiders trying to take over and make a buck off a of town, I like that sort of material in the movie. I don't think it quite fits this movie, nor this material, nor the audience, maybe. I didn't find the ideas or wisdom I kind of want in my movie, so for all those reasons why I like to look at this movie, I really appreciate the craftsmanship, so the story elements and themes don't come together for me at all, so I'm going to give it two and a half stars. If parents have hang-ups about demons and devils, you probably don't want to show your kids this movie if you don't care. I still don't think this is for young kids because they won't be able to follow the plot as easily as they're supposed to. But nevertheless, what did you think about this movie? Let us know in the comments. Please subscribe to this channel for more content. Great content. Thanks and have a great day.